Hey there, Internet! I'm Funky Monkey with another Untold Marvelous Legend, and it's time to come back down to Earth again and meet up with Scott Lang, that was done so dirty after Civil War, for another astronomically ant-sized adventure and a little lesson on disreputable dealing. Released in 2018, Ant-Man and the Wasp returns us to the streets of San Francisco. Scott Lang is serving house arrest after the Battle of Munich Airport, but with only days left on his sentence, he dreams of Janet Van Dyne. Enter Hank Pym, Hope Van Dyne Pym, and a whole world of trouble as double crosses, failed experiments, and Pym's legacy all threaten to separate Pym from the chance of ever seeing his lost partner again. So grab your microscopes and follow me down to the mean streets of San Francisco as we chart the further adventures of... Ant-Man and the Wasp. The call came late one night, and Ant-Man and the Wasp sprang into action. Some lunatic got hold of the ICBM codes and launched one, so our heroes were dispatched to bring it down. But the missile was heavily armoured, so Janet had to go subatomic to get in. And so the world was saved, and Janet Van Dyne was never seen again. And then a down on his luck Scott Lang entered the mix, and the rest is history. In the present day, Scott Lang and his daughter are on a... mission. But oh dear. After the Battle of Munich Airport, Scott Lang cut a deal to stay under house arrest and give up heroing. Which means that he can't set foot outside his own perimeter. And in a hot bath... Scott Lang dreams... of being Janet? Either way, it's enough to bring hope into the mix. And so Scott is brought to the lab, and learns a little something about quantum entanglement. The Pims believe that Janet may have used Scott to quantum entangle herself a way back to the world above, so they've built a quantum tunnel to find her. But to operate their quantum tunnel they'll need an extra component, one which you can't just get from the hardware store. But black market tech dealers aren't the most reputable of folks. Sonny Birch. Not much to say about him, except that he's a thorn in the side of our heroes the whole way through. And when the plans change, hope adapts. But someone else wants that component too. This is Ghost, and as her name implies, she can walk through walls. But her powers are killing her and she reckons that quantum energy will save her. Which leads to an old acquaintance. And Cassie's school? The version 1 ant suit contains a tracker that will help our heroes locate their stolen shrunken lab, but it's hidden in a trophy that Cassie's taken to school for, show and tell, and so our heroes infiltrate the school and retrieve the suit. If you had micronized technology that you wanted to keep from prying eyes, where would you store it? Leave me a comment discussing it below. Our heroes find Ghost's lair, and get entangled in another situation. So what's the deal with Ghost then? Well, her dad, Elias Starr, worked with Hank, until he didn't, and then continued his research alone. But results weren't coming, so Papa Starr took more and more risks, and the quantum tunnel collapsed and exploded. Ava, who became Ghost, was caught in the blast, and the only survivor. Enter Bill Foster, for S.H.I.E.L.D., who raised her from there, and is still trying to steer her right today. But Hank is Trixie. Classic ploy, that. Though mostly I'd have the tin on me, but you don't want to know where. Hey, nobody said that us secret quasi-military operatives lived glamorous lives like the Bond movies. And while outside influences vie for Pym's technologies, our heroes fire up the tunnel. Enter Janet, to beat a path to her quantum location. But the FBI now have the lab's location, and the Pims are caught. As developer of the ant suit, Hank's on the hook for Scott taking part in the Battle of Munich Airport, as happened in Captain America Civil War. Enter Ghost to complicate matters, and Scott to simplify them. And so the stage is set for our finale, as Hank heads into the quantum realm to rescue Janet, while our heroes battle both Ghost and Birch's men for the shrunken lab. After a bumpy landing, Hank 
finally reunites with Janet. While Birch gets the lab, and almost gets away. But he didn't reckon with Giant Man. Enter Ghost to complicate matters. But our heroes keep her busy just long enough. And after a tearful reunion, the original Wasp gives Ghost exactly what she needs. Which leads to another House of Love top tip. Patience is a virtue, and mercy is its own reward. And so our movie ends as Scott Lang is freed from house arrest, and goes back to the Quantum Realm to help Ghost out. But oh dear. Because the Thanos snap took out Hank, Janet, and Hope, leaving nobody to retrieve Scott. And so, there he drifted in the Quantum Realm for five years. And you know the rest. And if you don't, it's linked below. Damn near took me out too. But that's another story. Anyway, that was Ant-Man and the Wasp. But despite the final scene's importance, I think that this is a story that's best left untold. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was an interwoven tale dovetailing into a neat, if somewhat sad, climax. This movie, on the other hand, is all over the place. There are too many antagonists, eminently hateable crooks, officious FBI staff, and a supposedly murderous phase-changing operative. Not to mention the cold relationship between Scott Lang and the Pims. But again, this isn't the first movie, and a lot of what makes this movie so hard for me to watch are the performances, precisely because they're so good. Evangeline Lilly's Hope Van Dyne, starting off cold once again before warming through the movie. Paul Rudd's Scott Lang, who seems much more like an afterthought in his own movie, though he is admittedly sharing the title. And veterans Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer as Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne respectively, at least for as much screen time as Pfeiffer gets, being in herself a walking MacGuffin. And of Douglas's Hank Pym, he is almost as stubborn and hot-headed as his comic book counterpart. Though losing your wife in the line of duty as he did doesn't tend to make for a good personality, which leads us to the procession of villains and antagonists, beginning with Walton Goggins' Sonny Birch, an appropriately odious, southern gentleman, whose only presence in the movie is to cause tension. And for as much as Randall Parker's Jimmy Woo appears in this movie, his role is just to provide a pressure on Scott for breaking house arrest. No, the real villain of the piece, who is instantly redeemed in the climax, is Hannah John Kamen's Ghost, a suitably unhinged and spacey present, for someone who has days to live if they can't get quantum particles. And Lawrence Fishburne is always a joy to watch. Here is Dr. Bill Foster, seeming just as out of his element as in The Matrix Revolutions. And of course, we have to mention the Three Stooges, as Fellow Monkey described them. Kurt, Dave, and Luis. David Dustmalchian, Tip, T.I. Harris, and Michael Peña bringing much-needed levity to this weighty tale. I'm just no fan of movies about desperate fugitives, the whole world against our protagonists and the high tension of it all. Were it up to me, I'd certainly remove half of the antagonists from the movie, which is 118 minutes long, credits included. Perhaps at 80 or 90 it'd be an easier sit, and a much less involved story. So for all of this, is it a bad movie? No, it's still professionally made, a slick Marvel actioner with Hope's character finally getting the fight action that she'd trained for. And Scott Lang is an everyman in a crazy situation. And the effects work, especially for all the crazy cast ons in this movie, is solid. But for all the love at the core of this movie, it's very mean spirited on its surface. And regular viewers know how much I value likability, a quality that, in many of these characters, is sorely lacking. This is the tale of how Scott Lang saved the Marvel Universe and almost destroyed the Ant-Man franchise to do it. I've been Funky Monkey, inviting you to join me next time as we round out these untold tales by returning to the subject of the Kree and one of their operatives that isn't. See you there!